what's up everybody welcome back to the most awaited video of the channel <laughs> so many requests for this video so many messages in whatsapp and emails <laughs> there are thousands of videos in youtube for this topic but still everybody wants another video <laughs> No problem. Whatever you want, I will just present it. Welcome to Exotic Astrology, the new video, Symptoms of Love Marriage. <laughs> Not signs, symptoms. Is it a disease? <laughs> Maybe it is, right? <laughs> In Hindi, we say, Pyar ek rog. <laughs> Interestingly, there's also a word rogue in English, right? If you don't know, Google it. <laughs> All right. If you have not subscribed to my channel, then subscribe to it. And if you like this video, then click the like button and share it with your loved ones or with those looking for the answers. Will they have a love marriage or not? So for the Western audience, what is a love marriage? Love marriage is simply the marriage which happens in the West. It is basically the way how the marriage happens. Which means that the boy and the girl meet somewhere and they get to know each other. Then they become friends, then good friends, then best friends. Then they fall in love, they go into a relationship. And then finally, if it sustains, which is very rare... <laughs> <laughs> then they will decide that finally we want to get married. On the other hand, in India, there is this concept of arranged marriage. Where the parents of the girl and the boy, they will formally introduce both of them. And then they will have meetings, one meeting, two meeting, three meeting, four meeting, five meeting or maybe 10 meetings, depending on the complexity of the boy and the girl. <laughs> and then if they feel that we can go ahead, along with astrological compatibility matching and all this, then they finally decide that we will get married. Now this doesn't happen in the West because that's not the tradition anymore. And even in India, uh, this... Tradition is still there in some parts like in the villages and in the towns and to some extent in the cities also. But love marriage is becoming very prominent these days because there's a lot of intercultural mixing which is happening. Therefore, what are the indications in somebody's horoscope that he or she will have a love marriage? Well... First of all, the biggest, the biggest, the biggest end of it all can't get better than this for love marriage. See, people concentrate on Venus, but you have to concentrate on moon equally. Okay, because... Moon represents the mind. Everything starts with the mind. You fall in love later, but first you kind of like the person. Romance comes later, which is Venus. Therefore, Moon linked with Rahu is the first indicator of a person who can go for a love marriage. Because Rahu represents what? Rahu represents... Breaking the traditions out of box, breaking orders. And Rahu also represents introducing new things. So when it is with moon, Rahu, if, if this is in the horoscope of a native who is born in India, in a town or a village or, even a, or maybe even a, even a city, he might feel that no, I don't want to go for any arranged marriage. I want to try what's there in the West. Then he will go into relationships and then finally he might get married. So that is the biggest indicator. 
Now when Moon and Rahu are conjunct or they are aspecting each other, fifth and ninth aspect of Rahu, then the person is not only unorthodox in matters of love romance, he is unorthodox in general. I will make video on Moon Rahu conjunction later but here in matters of love romance also it starts because the thing starts here in the mind and from there it goes. Then the next indicator is Venus connected because Venus is love and romance. The things which you value in life, in partners I mean and in relationships. Venus conjunct or aspected by Rahu. That is a big indicator because when Venus is under influence of Rahu then what happens? The person likes partners who are from a different race, different community or in matters of relationships they like to be a bit different which in 1980s and 1990s and in the beginning 21st century in India was considered to be a very big taboo breaking scenario uh, for love marriage matters. I mean for somebody to break the system of arranged marriage. That is why this is another indication. Also, another indication is Venus connected with Ketu. More than Rahu, I have seen Venus connected with Ketu. Why? Because Ketu represents the past, your past lives. And when Venus is connected with Ketu, or especially when it is conjunct, Venus Ketu conjunct, then what happens? There is a very strong likelihood that the person who you are marrying is coming to you from a dif from a different realm altogether. When I say different realm, I don't mean they have descended from the heavens. <laughs> it simply means that they might be coming from the past. Some strong karmic connection is there. Which means and Rahu Ketu also represents foreign lands, law away from your tradition, away from your country. So that's how it happens these days. Somewhere you go and suddenly you meet somebody and you fall in love. And then you get married. So these are different indications, most strong, the strongest. Now, apart from this, we have to go to the houses especially. For example, the placement of Rahu in the 7th house of marriage or Rahu in the 5th house. This also indicates the possibility of an unconventional marriage because these are the houses of love and marriage and union especially. <clears throat> Apart from this, another very strong significator is placement of Venus in the fifth house. Now why fifth house? Because it is the house of love and romance. No. See fifth house is a very important house. It is equally important like the Lagna. Because fifth house represents those things which can should I put it this way? Fifth house represents those things which has the power to make you dance. See, because fifth house is the house of children. Whenever the child will give a cry, what the mother will do? She will leave everything and she will just run. My dear child, what happened? Whenever the child will cry or shout, the father will be like, my dear child, what happened to you? Because it, it has the power to do, make you do anything, whatever it wants, right? That is why if the child wants, he can go, uh, go in the top of his father by making him a donkey or a, like an animal. In India, they will do that sometimes when they are young uh, kid. 
they will the father will become like the animal and the baby will be above him and he or she the baby will go as if that father is her car or an animal <clears throat> so when venus is in the fifth house what it means that love romance can drive you mad can drive you crazy because it is the house of devotion fifth house is the house of devotion what you are, what you do with children you are selflessly devoted yes so similarly when venus is in the fifth house the traits of venus have the power to control you unlimitedly because that planet is sitting there <laughs> and another indication is presence of venus in which house in the seventh house because when venus is in the seventh house what it means that to activate that house you need kind of a romance which means if a person has venus in the seventh house he will not prefer to marry somebody without having a romantic connection with the person another indication is presence of now this this two are very subtle but i have seen in my experience with my limited fund of knowledge and seeing horoscopes that the two placements which i am going to say now they are phenomenal and i will tell you the reasons why more than venus in the fifth more than venus in the 7th more than venus with rahu see moon rahu is like there's no question moon rahu is moon rahu <laughs> but after moon rahu if there are certain placements then it is this venus in the 3rd house and the 8th house if venus is placed in the 3rd house in any sign or it is placed in the 8th house why because what is originally the third house of the natural zodiac it is the sign of gemini gemini is what twins two people it's a dual sign it's actually two people uniting they are mating that's what the sign is that is why gemini in astrology is known as mithun rashi and why from where does the word mithun come mithun comes from the word maithun maithun is what union sex coming together maithun so from maithun comes the word mithun and eighth house is the house of your genitals sexuality seventh house is the union and eighth house represents the act of copulation so the third house is eighth from the eighth it means it is the higher octave of the eighth house and eighth house also as i said venus that is the house of sexuality so when venus is there in the third house or in the eighth house there's too much need or desire for all this with because of which the person is always searching and eighth house originally is the sign of scorpio which is what hidden things secret things underground scandals which happen if these things run into obsession right third house venus or eighth house venus and another placement can be venus in the 11th house this is not very strong indicator but it is also one of the indicator because 11th house is the house of friends and especially if a man has venus in the 11th house it means that he will have too many friends who are female <laughs> any planet in the 11th house will show the results if saturn is there i have seen people having friends who are very mature and when they meet they will have very strong and very you know, very grounded conversations if sun is there it will be too much ego battles <laughs> 
If Venus is there or Mercury is there, too many friends. And if Venus is there, then especially female friends. Especially if in a, if it is in a man's chart, because in a man's chart, Venus represents the wife. Apart from that, there's another placement. For example, if Venus is connected with Moon, for example, if Venus and Moon are sitting together in any sign, in any house, or it is aspecting each other, which means they are seven houses apart, because they will only aspect each other if they are seven houses apart. Means they are influencing each other. What happens when Moon Venus are there together? The person to feel happy, which is the Moon, he needs Venus, which is what love, romance, etc. So there is like too much dependence on that. That is why Moon Venus Yoga, although it makes the person's nature very sweet, very charming, very loving, it is not considered good because they are enemies in astrology. It is not bad, but the predicament with this placement is there's too much emotional, either, either the attachment is too much or the problem is, see moon is a very fast moving planet. So when it sits with Venus, the person, his mind keeps hovering from one person to the other. Yes. <laughs> so he, uh, these are the people, moon Venus will say, Oh, I met this person and I felt as if he's my soulmate. <laughs> the soulmate concept comes because of Rahu more, but because of Moon also. Every person they will meet, they will say, Oh, this is my soulmate. <laughs> because Rahu is what Rahu gives you that illusion, that phantasmagoria, that yes, one day you will meet somebody and then things will click and that's it. And then suddenly what happens? Bang. <laughs> You are ripped apart by that person or either ways you go. And another indication which also I have seen working is combination of Mars and Venus and Mercury together. If all three are together. See Mars Venus is what I will tell you. Mars Venus conjunction can be perfectly explained through this scene which happens in southern part of India. I have been in South India for six years, so I have seen this in many places. See what happens is, there is something called as dosa which we make in South India. So when you make dosa, before making dosa what you do? If you go to some restaurant where they are making dosas, you will see, there will be this hot pan and they will put some water. Okay, And when they put water, what happens? Suddenly the water is evaporated. But that happens in a very fast way. So Venus is what? Venus is water, love, relationships, romance. Mars is fire. So you are putting water and fire together. So what happens? It's extinguished. <laughs> so the relationships with where people have Mars and Venus linked or this can happen if Mars is sitting in the signs of Venus and Venus in the, Venus is sitting in the signs of Mars there is a Parivartan Yoga which is very famous in astrology I will go to Yogas later but these are different placements about which I am saying and why I said Venus, Mars and Mercury why not Venus, Mercury because Venus, Mercury is conjunct for most of the people because Venus, Sun and Mercury are always nearby. So, you will always see most of the people having conjunctions of Mercury, Venus. Which makes people very social. And that is the truth. Because most of the people that you know in this world are social. <laughs> but when you see Mars also with Mercury, Venus. Then that can give you an indication. Or especially if this is happening in the 7th house. Then bang. <laughs> Or the fifth house, or the third, or eighth house is like confirmed. <laughs> or if there are too many Rajasic planets in the eighth house, or in the seventh house, suppose which other Rajasic planets? Mercury, Venus, right? So, Mercury, Venus 
although it is there in many people but it can lead to such things if they are in the first house or seventh house or especially eighth house because that is the house of sexual indulgence because these two are rajasic planets rajas means too much desire to enjoy materialistic mundane selfish enjoyment so when they are in the houses especially the third house or the seventh house and in the eighth house which is the core house of intimacy and all whatever you say or if it is in the lagna itself then things can go haywire <laughs> and if it is in the fifth house also but, but again depends the whole horoscope has to be examined well, what if what if uh, saturn is looking at this then results will be different what if sun is sitting there then results will be different is there any other combination left i don't think in my nature anything is left venus with rahu venus with ketu venus with mars and moon these now somebody will ask me in the comments that oh i have this yoga what you said oh i have that yoga but this is not happening well i am not only talking of venus here we also have to see houses interrelated for example you have to see if the 7th house and the 11th house and the 5th house are having linkages what do i mean when i say linkage linkage means if their lords are connected or aspected in any way for example if let me give you an example if somebody is a aries ascendant so who is his fifth lord sun and who is his seventh lord seventh lord is aries ascendant libra right venus that means if in a aries ascendant's horoscope anywhere in any house of a aries ascendant if sun and venus are sitting together which is very likely because they are always nearby then there is a very strong likelihood because romance and marriage are sitting together now depending on the house where they are sitting it can alter the results now for example if sun and venus are aspecting each other which cannot happen because they cannot go beyond so for aries the aspect matter will not take place but you take a different example for example you take libra ascendant so for libra ascendant seventh house is ruled by mars and fifth house is ruled by saturn so suppose for a libra ascendant mars is sitting in the 10th house and saturn is sitting in the 4th house in capricorn mars is in cancer and saturn is in 4th house in capricorn which means they are aspecting each other this can be a very strong combination because whenever two planets are aspecting each other they are trying to put each other's qualities into each other or if they are exchanging the signs or if they are conjunct exchanging signs means if saturn is either in second house in scorpio or in the seventh house in aries either of these two and mars is either in the fourth house in capricorn or fifth house in aquarius then this result will this will increase the possibility of a love marriage and ultimately if the 5th house and 11th house are connected then also the possibility increases because 11th house is what ultimately it's the fulfillment of desire and if the linkage is there with the 7th house then it is very sure that the love affair which you are having now will convert into marriage if the 11th lord is involved or suppose 
the ruler of the fifth and the seventh is sitting combined in the eleventh house. So, for example, if somebody is a Libra ascendant, then if his seventh lord Mars and fifth lord Saturn is sitting in the sign of Leo in the eleventh house, then this is a very sure shot combination. And similarly, if Saturn and Mars are sitting in the sixth house, that is not a very good combination. If you take this issue into account, then it can mean that because sixth house is the house of celibacy. Celibacy means the partner is not there with you, which technically in these days is called divorce because it is 12th from the seventh house. It is the house of separation from the spouse. So Mars is the seventh lord. So seventh lord sitting with the fifth lord in the sixth house, which means whenever the seventh house gets active, either it's marriage or fifth house of love, the sixth house also gets active. So it is like a 50-50 scenario. You get into a relationship, then you break. You get, break, get, break. Sixth lord linked with fifth and seventh gives this dynamics. Multiple relationships. One, two, three, four, five, six. God knows how many. Multiple marriages also, maybe. <laughs> Depending on the placement of other planets. Do not make a blind judgment. That is what I am telling in this video again and again. Do not make a blind judgment. Because I do not want people to blast in the comments. That, oh, you said this, but this is not happening. Because everybody will have... Because from last 25 minutes, I have given so many combinations. There are so many indications. Because everybody will have some tendency or the other. Or there are some other indications also. For example, if somebody has... Ascendants like Taurus and Libra because Venus is ruling the Lagna, the head, the intellect. The, 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 so the only thing that is going on in their head is love and romance most of the times. Depending on placement of other planets. Then the possibilities of having these kind of things improve. They will increase because the planet which is giving you romance and love that is controlling your ascendant. Or if Venus is sitting in the Lagna itself. So now you have to find out how many of this do you have and then you have to check the dashas which are the time periods in Vedic astrology about which I will discuss later. So it doesn't happen that anybody who has these yogas will definitely have a love marriage. Or if nobody has any of these yogas or if somebody has some yoga related to this then you will have a love marriage 1000%. That is also not sure. And there are certain other indications also. If somebody has too many planets in Gemini and Scorpio, then also I have seen they go for these kind of affairs and etc. And there are certain nakshatras that give us inclinations for doing these things. For example, the nakshatra of Mrikshira, which I have seen, is very prominent. Because Mrikshira is what? Mrikshira comes in. Do that homework where Mrikshira Nakshatra lies. What is Mrikshira? Mrikshira is that deer who is roaming in the forest searching things. So do you understand? <laughs> that is it from my side. If you have any questions, queries and comments, then please let me know in the comment section. And if you think this video helped you and you want to contribute something, then the link to PayPal is there. Or else, share this video with everybody and benefit yourselves and others. Until next time, bye-bye. See you.